Hello everyone and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles! It's been like three months since I actually had the chance to record this because before I moved it was all pre-recorded anyway. In the last episode, God, I think we came here to the Hidden Village and we learnt somewhat more about its residents and we met Mikol. This episode we're going to be doing a bit of a half and half. We're going to be having some um, kind of... So we're going to rest up and just have a little bit more story. Then it will be side quests. Uh, at least in the Hidden Village for the next couple of episodes. So, with that, let's rest up for the night. You must be tired. Feel free to use this room. Would you like to take a rest? Yes, I would. I've decided I'm not going to do beep boop robot noises for all the machina. Because the mechon don't sound like that anyway. We know they don't sound like that in cutscenes anyway. Um... How are you? Sleep well? Yes, very well. I wanted to, uh, um, talk about your son. Have you made up your mind? Yes. We agree with you. Egil must be stopped. But we can't act now. Oh? Why is that? Before we came here, we heard of plans to form an allied force on Bionis. Any day now, they're going to launch an attack on Mechonis. But it's too dangerous. Egil has made a weapon that could kill us all. The weapon that Munkar was using? The one that shoots green fluid? He said it can decompose any being from Bionis. We have to go back and warn them, before it's too late. Well, you could always ask me to do it. Dixon! What are you doing here? I can't believe you found us. Why? This place is directly below the fortress. If you fell from up there, I figured you must have ended up here. And Bob's your uncle. <laughs> you're looking well, Dixon. Ah, I see you're looking like your usual old self. You know each other. Kinda. <laughs> I scratch his back. He scratches mine. He tells us about the outside world. And we give him technology and information. Why did you keep that to yourself? That information is vital to all who fight Maconis. Not all of us Homs are good people. What would happen if the Maconis hating types found this place? These Machina cut themselves off from the world to get away from pointless fighting. So they escaped to live in peace. Somewhere they wouldn't be seen. Makes sense. Clever little crown princess, ain't ya? So this is where you obtained all that stuff you brought back to Colony 9. I wondered where you were getting it from. I thought it was fine as long as it helped Shulk out at the lab. I guess the secret's out now. So, that weapon. How dangerous are we talking about? I haven't discovered why, but it disintegrates anything it touches. But only if it's living tissue from Bionis. Hmm. Bet that would come in handy. Dixon. I'm only joking. Anyway, for now, just don't let any of it touch you. I'll come up with something to counter it. Leave it with me and I'll keep you posted. You lot go and take care of that eagle or whatever his name is. If you take him down, the Allied force might not even be needed. Okay. Let me think about it for a bit. Fiora. Ain't made your mind up yet. Dixon, listen. Dunban told me all about it. The goal of your mission. So, you wanted to avenge Fiora? Yes. But you found her alive, and now you've got her back. So, you're all done now, ain't you? 
<sighs> what are you fighting for, Dixon? Me? He just gets right under my skin. That Egil guy. Because he's trying to exterminate the Homs? There's that. But that ain't everything. It's his hatred for the Bionis. Or more like his aim to wipe out everything that lives on the Bionis. <sighs> I'll tell you one thing. That Bionis allied force is coming together quicker than I thought. Really? Yep. That high end here prince is really moving things along. Will they launch an attack on Maconis? Of course. But it looks like the prince has got another plan. He gave me a message for you. When the Allied force attacks Mechonis, you don't need to join the fight. He wants you to take advantage of the chaos and do what it is you need to do. Prince Callion said that. I was pretty surprised too. He looks like a sissy, but he's got guts. Yeah. I think that's the type of man he is. So what are you gonna do? He wanted me to let him know. We're going to the Maconis capital. You're gonna take down Egil? I don't know. I can't forgive the Mekon for what they've done. But after listening to Mikon, I think there might be another way. You're too soft. Do you really think that? Too right. He's the self-proclaimed leader of Mekonis. I heard about what he did to the Monado. If you face him, it might get eaten up, but you have to throw everything at him. Even if there's only a slim chance of winning. Hesitate for one second and you're a goner. We won't let Shulk die. Not ever. Fiora, are you okay to be walking around? Yep. I have to hand it to her. That Lenarda's pretty good. And not just with machines. She's also quite familiar with organic physiology. You went to get the things you needed to cure me, right? I'm sorry I caused all this hassle. But I'm fine now. I'll be by your side, fighting to protect you. No matter where we go, no matter how difficult it gets, Shulk will do the right thing. It doesn't matter how slim our chances. Shulk will always stick to the right path. And don't forget, it's because of Shulk that we are all here, fighting together. I think that shows he has a strong character. Am I wrong, Dixon? Well, when I think about everything you lot have done, I can't deny that. Dixon, we're going to the Maconis capital. About the Allied force. Yeah, leave it to me. I ain't gonna let anything happen to the colony. Those Mekon won't get away with anything else. Are you going? Yes. Thank you for all your help. <laughs> you might run into someone called Venea in the capital. Just mention my name, she'll lend a hand. Venea? Is she a machina as well? She's my daughter. She won't be far from Egil. Hold on. You mean she's Egil's sister? You've got it, lad. And you say she'll help us? The girl doesn't want to hurt Egil, but she doesn't like what he's doing. She should be a big help to you young'uns. I don't know why she'd help us, but... We'll try and find her when we get there. <laughs> Good luck. Fiora, don't forget. I've only made temporary repairs. I think you should be able to fight, but don't overdo it. Come and see me the moment you experience any further system failure. I will. Thank you. In the meantime, I'm hoping I'll find a way to restore your former body. Is that possible? Theoretically, it might be possible to use your genetic information to regenerate your missing organs. Sorry, it's unfair for me to give you hope. To be honest, there's very little chance. But 
If there's even the slightest possibility, I'll have to try. Thank you, Leonardo. Fiora. <laughs> Don't make that face. OK, let's go. Off you go, kid. I'm counting on you and the Monado. Don't let me down, Shulk. Ah, uh, Dixon. <laughs> You're never gonna know what he's up to next. It's 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 he's a great one to watch. Why did that face betray me? And that light? No, that is not possible. It must have been remnants of memories from her former life that made me lose control. Memories. They are what limited the potential of Metal Face as well. I now know that I must erase every last trace of what they once were. All my servants need is the instinct to fight. This Hom's female. She was with the boy who wields the Monado. A light of her memory. It shines strongly in this one. Bring me face 20814. So it is this male. The boy Shulk remains a thorn in my side. I will enjoy watching my minion crush him. Be still, my servant. I see that your memories cause you much suffering. Interesting. Well, we won't be dealing with that for quite some time, because it's side quest o'clock for the next, like, ten episodes. At least. Maybe more. Shulk, take this. What is it? There's a path leading from the base of Digit 2 to the foot of the Mechonis. This is the security key to the door that seals the path. We who live in the village don't have any need for it, but it will be invaluable to you. We're in your debt, Linada. Shulk, Fiora, take care in your journey. We will. Linada. Thank you for everything. So, as I've said, our goal is not going to be done for a while, but our goal, as should be obvious in these scenes, is to proceed up the Maconis. I've kind of been coy about this before now, but I want to be clear. Th the entire Maconis is also part of the map. It's the big biggest part of kind of, if you see it, you can go there. Though I will say the Maconis is not, in terms of actual explorable surface, it is nowhere near really as big as the Bionis. It's probably about a quarter of the size of the Bionis. Our goal is to move up there, but we won't be doing that for about 10 or 15 episodes, I think. Uh, I actually don't know how long it is, because I haven't... I haven't got this far in kind of my practicing. I fell behind on that, because I'm normally, you know, 20, 30 episodes ahead of my practicing. But a house move and everything, it all... It all Slow down, so it's all going to be a bit by the seat of my ass, by the seat of my ass, by the seat of my pants um, for the for the foreseeable future. But certainly, the next three or four episodes are going to be side quests here in the hidden village. Um, so we're going to start off with skill trees. Who's got skills? Uh, Fiora's learnt haste at the start of a battle. That's handy. Uh, Twenty percent of the time that happens, haste just speeds up her auto attacks, which is great for Fiora. Have I got Fiora on sword drones? Remind me. Yes, I have. Excellent. So, auto attack is great for charging uh, Fiora's talent art, which is her drones, which are always a lot of fun. Uh, that's all fully done. Um, oh, that's quite nice, because then she's got a power effect aura, which she often has on, which increases range of elementals as well. So, that's all really nice. Strength is a bit crap for her. We'll get work towards that ether expansion, I think. Ricky! Oh, yay! Uh, Ricky can now steal art points and share it with the, the party. Uh, we'll go towards Ricky Strong. And then, oh, Dumbman's finished this off as well. Ah, oh, immunity to blowdown. That's not amazing, but there we go. Uh, let's... Do you want the naked skill finally? No, let's go for this one a bit. Um, 
And then I think I'll just check arts points, but I think we're all pretty good to go. Ah, so power effect that I was talking about with Melia, not actually learned yet! Um, I thought we had it by now, um, so Melia doesn't actually have an aura yet, but soon, soon. Right, let's make it night time here, and find our first side quest in the Hidden Village. This is also so... Gal Galahad Fortress, so... Galahad Fortress and Sword Valley were kind of a bit of an in-between zone, um, but as in there were no quests there, so we can't actually know where they contribute to. Here, the Hidden Village is definitely in Maconis, and as such, um, we have our own little area here. If I bring up the affinity charts... Well, we don't actually know anyone in this area yet, so let's get to it. We're going to start with this guy here, Prox. Or is that a woman? Hard to tell. I think it's a woman. Here it is. Hey, do you have a minute? I need to talk to you. I've got this problem, you see? Do you know what I'm talking about? Please tell me more. Yes, we'd like to hear. Okay, here's the thing. It's my job to collect spring water from Zacked Spring, but lately I've been hearing those weird noises around there. It's creeping me out so badly I'm too scared to go inside to do my job. I did, she didn't say go inside, what the fuck did I get that from? You know how that silver mechon fell into the beach recently? It sounds like the noise is coming from that. But I'm too scared to investigate it properly to find out what it is. So, could you go and check what's making the noise? If it's a silver face making that noise, we can't ignore it. It's scaring the villagers, so we have to go and check it out. What's that about a silver face? Well, whatever. I need you to find out what's making the noise. So this gives us mysterious noises, and we get some drones as a reward, so let's go for it. When you find out what's scoring the noise, come and find me. So, that should now let us see... Yes, so, weirdly, I'm I'm, I'm a bad one for this. Um, we have this final area, the purple area, which is the Hidden Village. I always refer to the, the five areas as Colony 9, Colony 6, Central Bionis, Upper Bionis, and Maconis. Because it is Maconis, and there are, in fact, quests further up the Maconis that go into it, but it all counts as uh, affinity towards the Hidden Village. So if I talk about Maconis affinity, I mean the Hidden Village, I just it is all of Maconis anyway. Maconis, in terms of its affinity chart and affinity required to kind of get to different levels, has the least requirements in the game. As such, when we do uh, quests, you'll find out that it is, in fact, the... It's the fastest one for you to gain affinity with. Now, this is interesting, by the way. It's, it's, first off, fucking love this beach at sunset, especially with the viewers of the Titans above me. Very cool. Um, but if we switch to night, actual true nighttime here... Then we see this thing is actually glowing in there, and we can see it's um, pulsing in the night time, which is kind of cool. If we examine it, this is the cause of the sound. Let's go and tell Prox. And we get an external sensor. Um, but yes, we'll find over the next couple of episodes while we're doing side quests in the Hidden Village, we'll get uh, through to like three or four star affinity really quickly. Um, also because most of the quests in here are actually available like now. So with that... So it was that, that's what it was, an ex, its external sensor was react, reacting to a nearby crabble. Now I know what it is, I don't know why I made such a fuss. But I'm glad we can go to the beach knowing we won't get eaten. Ah, oh, what a relief, another problem solved. Yes indeed, it is, a job well done. Thank you so much. Take this as a thank you, you've earned it. And that completes the quest. Um, when you look on the visualizer you'll see I put the Sword Valley quests as if they were... Um, Mechonis quests, but I say they're actually not. They don't give affinity anywhere, so they don't have an area that they're attached to the Sword Valley ones, but it made sense to kind of group it with this. And this is the final kind of obvious chunk of quests. You'll notice our main kind of arc going through the um, visualizer. Keep it on, Doctor, by the way. Uh, but zoom it out a bit. Let's actually have a look at where we are. You can see the path we've taken, and you can see certain key events like, you know, the first batch of quests when we got to Bionis Leg, when we got to more stuff in Colony X, then when we got first to... Um, Upper Bionis, well, to Central Bionis and the um, Nopon Village, and then up to Alchemoth. Now we're starting to go around the top, the section where you can see first Valak Mountain, right at the top, and as we curve around to the right there, we're getting into kind of the hidden village. From here, as you can see, there's no obvious direction that the main quest line actually takes in that visualizer, because stuff gets more complicated, because a lot of things require a lot of other things to be done, and basically it gets much more like a web from there on, so just be aware of that. It's mildly cool. Anyway, this woman here gives us our next quest, and she's a Homs. We are not the only people to have ever fallen off Galahad Fortress and Sword Valley. What am I going to do? I really have to get it to them. Hey, what's up? Bit of trouble? What bothers you? You may tell us your woes. Hey, maybe you can help. I don't mean to burden you with this, but I need some help here. I need to get food to the villagers keeping watch outside the village. I haven't been feeling well lately, and I can't bring myself to go. They look forward to me taking them their meals every day. 
If only someone else could take their meals to them for me. That would make everyone happy. I can understand how you feel. We could deliver the food for them on your behalf. You should not overexert yourself if you're feeling out of sorts. That's so sweet of you to say. I think I'll take you up on your kind offer. And this gives us food delivery. Take the food to Theo, who is at the base of Digit 2. So you'll take the food for me? Oh, I'm so grateful. Okay, I'll give it my best shot. Together. Yes, that sounds great, Shulk. The two villagers keep watching the Digit 2 area. They should be stationed by the sea, a little way down from Digit 2. Keep a good lookout for them. <laughs> hey, lookout puns. There we go. So, Digit 2 is, I believe, this one over here, because it's basically Digit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, around like that. So, for this, we're going to start off at the Black Wreckage. And if we walk over here, because um, we kind of need to get to this area here, uh, I'm going to grab some collectibles, but avoid mech on as much as possible, but I think they're going to be unavoidable entirely as I kind of come around the corner here. This gives us a new landmark, which is... The Connecting Bridge, and at this point I'm actually going to bring up the quest log to make sure I track it and walk properly to where I need to be. I'm almost certainly going to get attacked by this. Yep, there we go. Well, let's kill these guys quickly. Oh my god, these are quite high level compared to me. Bug at me. Oh, I should show off, by the way, Fiora's Sword Drones uh, is fuck. Whoa, shit, we're getting visions already. That's not a good sign. Oh, it's going to pure daze me? That's evil. Anyway, Sword Drones. There you go, Sword Drones is basically just a, like, 10, um, a, a, a 10, uh, hit combo, which is really cool and one of Fiora's most powerful arts. Well, that didn't go well for me, I'll be honest. So, we finally escaped from those Mechon, because those are offensive Seekers are, are quite offensive, to be honest. And this kind of brings us out onto this plane. We've been down there before, that's Digit 1's plane. With that being digit one, which means this one here is digit two. Then three, four. I should be missing a digit. What is that? It's thumb. Then one, two, three. Ah, yeah, maybe one of them has not stood up properly. Either way, this one is definitely digit two. So there we go. Uh, we've got these meteor artilleries that I'm going to try and avoid. Didn't work very well, did it? Um, a lot of scary things. Basically, we are quite underleveled because of how much I caned through the plots. There we go, digit two plane. Uh, because of how much I've been caning through the plots, uh, we are actually fairly severely underleveled. Ow. Uh, I suspect very much that, you know, 10 to 12 episodes of side quests is going to sort that out pretty nicely. And by the time we reshoot, that's part of what a, genuinely one of the reasons I don't want to just power on with the main quest now. Partly because I want to have a break to do a lot of the side quests that have become available, um, but also because. <laughs> because we'll be fucking rinsed by a lot of stuff if we do go and do the main quest now because we're about five or six levels below where we need to be. So, there's this big slow wall to climb down which I can speed up by just, as long as you grab it again before you hit the ground because the fall will kill you. Um, this, by the way, can be a nice place for getting quite a few collectibles. I need to remind myself where I'm at on the Collectopedia as well. Did I get everything in Galahad Fortress? No, I'm still missing a strange Well, I'll be back for that. Uh, we have got some stuff to finish up on Sword Valley and Galahad Fortress, um, so I'll be doing that over the coming episodes, definitely. Anyway, here are two uh, people keeping watch. There is Zakort. I wonder how she's doing. I wonder if I would have stopped by if I knew I'd help. I would have stopped her if I knew I'd be feeling this lonely. Well, we'll deal with him uh, later in this episode, actually. But here's the other human, which is Theo. Huh? Oh, time to eat. I was starting to get hungry. The grub's the only thing to look forward to in this job. But why are you bringing here? What's up with Natalia? Oh, right. It's nice of her to deliver food to us out here. I like it, but I do feel a bit like I'm taking advantage of her. Still, there's another Homs in the village of who I've heard is reliable. As long as she got him, I reckon she should be alright. Ah, what a relief. Another problem solved. Yes, indeed. A job well done. By the way, give this to Natalia if you're going back to the village. It's a fish I caught around here. It's some good eating and nutritious to boot. I feel like I owe her a little something for always delivering my dinner. And we get a deep water fish to take back to her. It basically, just this game's got a reason why you meaningfully need to return to her. I am going to mine this ice ether gear that's here, and then we'll head back to Natalia in the village. You went already? Wow, that was quick. What's that? A fish? For me? Ah, oh, how thoughtful of him. Ah, oh, it's just like Theo to be thinking of others. He's a kind soul. Maybe if I make this into a soup, I'll get better sooner. Okay then, I'm gonna go get some rest so I can get back to work tomorrow. And that completes food delivery. And with that, another quest has unlocked. Unfortunately, what Gemini boots? Who are they for? Oh, they're for Fiora. No, they're not. Oh, 
Well, we got a new visual for Theo Fiora. Um, but I don't think those boots were for her. How very strange. Anyway, Gemini is a type of medium armor, um, which would be quite handy, I think, for Melia, who we have in medium armor now. Uh, right, with that, we actually need to confusingly head back to where we just were. Annoyingly, we can't walk to it. We've got to walk to Digit 2 Plane and walk all the way down there again. And this time, we have a quest from this machina here, Zakort. Yes. Or Zakort. I've really got a lot on my mind. Can you guess what it's about? Please, tell me more. Maybe we'll be able to help. Isn't that right, Fiora? That's right. It's my girlfriend. It's her job to keep watch over Maconis Field. She works there full time, so we got this long distance thing going. And with me being afraid of heights, I can't go and see her. I worry she might forget about me if we stay apart any longer. I know how painful it feels to be separated from someone. Is there anything we can do? I want to help any way we can. Thanks for the thought. But what I need might be pretty difficult to do. I won't know if you don't tell me. What is it? Okay. I don't want her to forget about me. I came up with this idea to give her a present. I'm sure a treasure called the Tear of the Sky will make an impression. But you can only get it on the distant fingertip. There's no way I can get up there. I'm terrified of heights. And this gives us to collect a tear of the sky from the distant finger distant fingertip on the fallen arm. Only during a thunderstorm. You'll go for me? Thanks. I know it's a lot of trouble. Okay, I'll give it my best shot. But it's a labour of love, right? I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, labour of love that I'm doing. Anyway, so the distant fingertip. It's actually not an easy place to get to. We're going to start at Digit 2 Plane. Confusingly, the quest tracker won't actually work here um, because it's um, not a thunderstorm, so it's not on the map at all. But we just need to proceed up here. I'm going to let the daytime music play. Um, this is one that's got a lot better in the remastered version. I'll let it play. And then the music loops from here. When I was doing my complex scripty voty thing to find out which tracks were my favourites, it was before I'd really spent much time listening to the remaster music at all. I kind of wanted to leave that for when I played through the game. This one has done really well out of it. I think I still just about prefer the cello piece in the night, but this one is now really nice. Basically, in the original version, this instrument you hear now, 
I only actually really learned from this version, it's supposed to be an oboe. Because it ends up as this, like, synthesized thing in the original version, and it just sounds a bit... grating? Uh, and it never stuck with me, but now it's actually... So a lot of the solo instruments are actually live recorded, uh, so it's a real, real person playing an oboe, and it makes this piece so much nicer. Much like the Night One, and much like a ton of the music in Xenoblade, it's got a kind of... It's tinged with sadness. It's a real thing where you can just... You can detect Xenoblade music from a mile away because it's got that, yeah, that almost sad note to it. Well, not almost, absolutely, just a little bit of bit, bit of sadness thrown in with it. Um, it's it's appropriate music, I think, in a lot of ways, Xenoblade's music for what is kind of a dying world in some ways, where it's like you know, human well, homsanity. The homs, let's say, generally are on their kind of are on their last legs. Um, the whole world is like kind of potentially. There's, there's talk of, like, you know, ether shifts and, and great cataclysms coming. Oh! Fucking shit, yeah! <laughs> so here we are at the distant fingertip. It's a secret area and we're getting a vision up here. Uh, what I'm laughing at is they said they'd need two of these to rebuild Colony 6. I wonder what they'd want rainbow slugs for. We need... The... The... Tear of the Sky only appears during a thunderstorm. The moment we got here, the second we got here, thunderstorm. Could not have written that. It's a shame because it means I was about to talk about the nice view we get from down there as well. Um, but really, we can't see any more of the Bionis. We can only barely see the distance, uh, the rest of the fallen arm from here. Let's switch the time up to actually change the weather back a bit because there's something else to talk about here as well. Is this fucker the wicked Salos that's level 95? You can, if you're bloody good, sneak when you use some aerial cloak gems, sneak past him and get the tear of the sky, but he disappears in a thunderstorm anyway, so you don't need to do that. Which is real nice. But yeah, you get some great views uh, from up here, because this is the kind of the, the fin very tip of the fingernail of the distant uh, finger. There's the fingertip below us. Um, which is all very cool. And yeah, you can see how kind of jungly the fallen arm is as well. It's, it's really cool. It's the only place you really see mechanical and biological together. It's actually literally the only place where you have both mechon and non-mechon enemies in the same area. Um, as in, in large numbers, obviously, you see some odd mechon kind of raging around, but this is the only place where both are found uh, completely, like, naturally at all times in the game. You can see Valak Mountain there as well, um, where the kind of wrist meets the, the sword. It's probably, this place is probably the cool area view you get of, of Valak Mountain. And on that note, I think we're going to hold it here. Next episode, uh, we're going to be on for a hell of a lot more. Side questing in the Fallen Arm. Hope you'll join me then. Thank you very much and good day.